You're listening to the La Jolla Cosmetic Podcast. Welcome everyone to the La Jolla Cosmetic Podcast. I'm your hostess, Monique Ramsey. And today we have one of our patients with us and her name is Camille Newburn. She's our guest and longtime patient and friend. And she's known for something that you wouldn't necessarily think of, but she's known for her unique pets and her fashion-related social media presence. And because she's been a patient at La Jolla Cosmetic for quite a number of years, we wanted to ask her to talk with us about the treatments she loves the most. But first, Camille, I have some really burning questions about you. First, oh, I'll, say, okay. I'll, say, I'll say welcome. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm so flattered to be asked. So my first burning question is, tell us about your animals. Well, I mean, how many hours do we have? <laughs> my animals are my babies. So I have two. I have Pip, who is a papillon. He is the love of my life. And he goes, he's here right now with me, obviously. Unfortunately, that's the downside of the podcast is you can't see the gorgeousness that is my son. And then I have <laughs> my newly acquired COVID pet is Mushu. She is an American mini pig. She is an absolute she's hell on wheels can i say that <laughs> yeah yeah okay <laughs> do whatever you want <laughs> okay no, no no don't let don't give me that free rate uh, she okay. is yeah so she was my like she was my covid pet everyone else got puppies i was like oh i'll get a pig but it's something <laughs> i'd wanted for a long time and she is just every day is a surprise but she is so lovely she is so fun and she's hysterical so and she gets along with pip so oh, pip no. has no they no. Hate, oh. Oh, pip oh. hates her <laughs> People are like, oh, are they friends? I'm like, no, not at all. Like oh, I saw online, so you know, you see all those animals, like those interspecies friendships right. where like the duck is cuddling the cow. And I was like, yeah, that'll be my house. No, I mean, <laughs> Pip is like on top of the couch. He growls every time she walks by. Oh my gosh. And does yeah. she care? Does she, or no, no she, she doesn't care. But does she like sort of antagonize? Does she kind of like get in Pip's face because she knows that it'll piss him off? A tiny bit, but honestly, I don't think she cares. She's like, I call her my little Beyonce. She's just like this strong little woman. And she just goes around the house and I, I admire her. I fear her a little, but she is like, <laughs> she has made like a difficult, you know, what are we going on two years now? She's brought sunshine to every day. And so that's been really fun. And it's been cool that during lockdown, I got to really bond with her because, you know, once life gets going, we're in and out all the time. So I got to be with her that first year, which is really fun. And how did you even think about getting a pig? Like, did you see something? Oh my gosh. Or um, no, something? I've always wanted one. So I'm like my first, I have like a weird trajectory, I guess in life, but like my first word was dog when I was little, like eight months old. So I've always loved animals. I used to want to be a veterinarian and eventually I'd like to have a little I call it a fancy farm. I think it's called like a hobby farm or a gentleman's farm. So like, oh. I don't want to hoe wheat, but I would like to, basically I want my own petting zoo. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, I would visit that. But like in Rancho Santa Fe, you know? Yeah, well, yeah, of course. <laughs> so like maybe grow some lettuce, have some like mini pigs and chickens, some get some herbs. eggs. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. But so, yeah, I got the pig before the farm. Oh, cute. Okay, the second burning question I have is you have this incredible signature lipstick. You know, if you look at Camille's Instagram, she has these gorgeous red lips. And so, and it seems to be the same color. Do you have a signature color or do you have to like shake it up a little bit? I go, you know what I go for is like a ready orange. Mm -hmm. So I alternate between a few. NARS has a good one called Heat Wave. I was wearing one yesterday by... Charlotte Tilbury called Tell Laura. And then there's a new one that I really like by Patrick Ta called I Don't Remember. But it's just, I like a bit of yellow in it because mm. it sounds finicky, but when you photograph things, the color always changes a bit. Oh. And so you may see like a bit more orange in person, but on camera, it'll come across a little bit more red. Whereas if you have a blue red, the blue may come through a little bit deeper. And so that's kind of the one I found that just jives with my skin tone the best and I've stuck to it. Yeah, well, it's fabulous. You always Thank look you. amazing. And tell everybody where they can follow you on Instagram while we're discussing. You can follow us, me and the farm, <laughs> at the LA Survival Guide. 
yeah, I started the blog and the social when I was still in Los Angeles. And so it was kind of like my cheeky nod to Los Angeles and surviving the urban jungle up there. And that was sort of how I built my following. And so I kept the name when I came down here and I just, the San Diego survival guide never sounded so great. That sounds like (laughs) flip-flops to me. And like, you know, it just like LA has a bit more grit to it a bit. Mm -hmm. Love it or hate it. People have opinions about LA. Yeah. Now you've really grown your Instagram following. I mean, you're up to 103,000 followers, which is yeah. incredible. Yeah, it and, is cool. Thank you. And so, well, yeah. And I looked yesterday and I was like, wait, where, where, how did that happen? <laughs> like, I don't know when it all happened because I know you've always had a really good following, but like all of a sudden it's just really caught on. I don't know either. People always ask me, how'd you grow your following? I'm like, mm, cute dog, cute shoes. <laughs> I think I started a little bit before everyone else did, if that makes sense. Everyone's had Instagram, but I started, I, I'm not by any means one of the originals, but I got in there maybe a year or so before the word influencer was a thing. And it became mm-hmm. like, oh, hey, I can do that. And before you drove down the street and saw girls in every single corner taking pictures in front of the pink wall. Right. Um, so I think I just got in there. I scooted in and got a spot mm-hmm. at the table, little before everyone else did. Interesting. And so now you've, it, is that kind of become your job now, right? Oh no, this, that's just okay. like my fun job. I say it's like my Botox and blow out money <laughs> because by the time you get your hair blown out and buy the new shoes and pay the photographer and whatnot, I earn a little revenue, but it's, and the space has become so saturated. No, I'm third generation and my family's real estate investment firm. And so that is like, real estate is here to stay. That is a sweet gig. My dad will never fire me. So I'm not leaving that. And this digital space is constantly changing. Mm -hmm. And thanks to La Jolla Cosmetic Surgery, I won't ever get older. But, you know, (laughs) at a certain point... Yeah, it's a fickle industry probably, you know? Exactly. And to throw all your eggs in that basket. But at the same time, I acknowledge the value of the audience. I love the creative space. And so I kind of loosely keep it up because I used to be a performer. I was an actress and I'm trained. We both went to SC and I was an English major. (laughs) And so my interests lie kind of in more performing and writing. So I have a children's book series idea that I'd actually like to do about the dog and pig. And so that would kind of, yeah. And so kind of acknowledging that I already have an audience Mm -hmm. and so that I can take them with me as opposed to starting from scratch. And I just, I like it. It's fun. I love taking pictures. I love being creative. I'm a creative at heart. It's just a tough way to earn a living. Yeah. And you can see that when you go to her Instagram, you just like all these phenomenal pictures and really fun to kind of peruse your feed and and to have that peppered with your with your pets is awesome too. And the fashion. Oh my God, the fashion. So much fun. So you were saying something on your blog and now I'm going to, of course, I'm going to forget it. I don't have it pulled up in front of me, but you were talking about fashion and Mm -hmm. you don't just buy clothes for buying clothes. Yeah. To me, it is an art. It's a creative outlet. It's a means of expression. Like people will ask, how do you define your style? You know, those certain questions, like how do you box yourself in? What kind of guys do you like? What kind of food do you like? I don't know. I mean, I'm dressed pretty mad. I said, I look like Tom Hanks from big today. Like the blazer is so big, but then like tomorrow I may be wearing like a fairy princess dress. I don't know. It's just, it's always been a avenue of expression for me. I think there's a way to dress appropriately, no matter the situation, but to do it in a way that's true to yourself. And I have a lot of fun with it. And I scroll back through my Instagram sometimes and there are some major misses. I'm like, what were you <laughs> thinking? Uh, it's so awful. But like, I tried. Yeah, exactly. And I love that about you. I love that you are like open to trying things and open to being who you are and not being apologetic about it. And you're so smart. So she's gorgeous, drop dead gorgeous. But she's also really, really smart and involved in the community also. And so do you want to talk a little bit about that? Oh my gosh, you're hitting all my favorite subjects, Monique. (laughs) I guess I was brought up in the volunteer world a little bit. My 
mom was a stay at home mom when I was growing up, but she was a full time volunteer. And so when I left the film industry about six years ago, I came back to San Diego, joined my family real estate company, as I said, and I was kind of looking to get involved in the community a little bit. And so I joined San Diego Rotary with my father. So Rotary is, gosh, they love me because I just like go and pitch them all over the place. It's a great and organization. Paid, yeah. And I get paid exactly zero dollars, but I love it. I deeply believe in it. So Rotary is one of the largest nonprofits in the world. There are 33,000 clubs around the world. Any teeny tiny town you go to, you'll see. I was in Portugal last week. I saw Rotary wheel, you know, in this little village. So it's everywhere. So I'm a member of the fourth largest club in the world, San Diego Rotary. We have about 500 members. And so when I joined, I was one of the youngest members. I'd say we're about maybe 25 to 30% female. The average member is basically my dad, like a late 60s Caucasian male. So I did, as a multi-ethnic female in my 30s, I didn't fit the bill at all. Plus I look like, you know, I look like a pixie. And so I didn't quite know what my niche was, but I love to travel. And so I took a service trip with two other members to Kenya. And we did a volunteer project in a refugee camp in Northern Kenya. And it just, it changed my life. It redirected my focus. It kind of, I've always known how blessed I am, how privileged I am. You know, you grow up in San Diego, everyone tells you you're so lucky, but to have that understanding, like to have boots on the ground and hands in the dirt kind of understanding Mm -hmm. of that really redirected my focus. And so that is kind of become along with my pets and my influencer. My other hobby is <laughs> I enjoy philanthropy work specifically. My passion is in East Africa. So for about four and a half years, we've been working to open a hospital in Northern Uganda, which actually finally opened in September. So oh, that wow. was kind of like, it still doesn't totally feel real because I haven't been able to get over there yet, but yeah. that was, that's kind of been my passion project. Wow. And so it's open. So you get to- It's open. Yeah. Are you going to try to get down there? I hope next year. It's just, you know, not making any plans right now, but optimistic. The biggest thing for me was getting, the hospital was supposed to open last April. So April of 2020, you know, I had all my tickets. My parents were going to come to the opening and then everything shut down. And it was devastating, not only to have that pause, but also it was so ironic to have in a very underserved community in the middle of a global health crisis an empty hospital. Right. Right. So the fact that it's now open, it's serving, it's vaccinating people. Even if I never, ever get there, quite frankly, it doesn't matter as long as it's serving the community that feels very good. And oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. But it would be nice to go. Yeah, it would. So I didn't realize that about San Diego Rotary being the fourth largest in the world. Yeah. So both my parents were involved with Rotary. Both of them were presidents. And, oh, and nice. so, yeah. Monique, you got to come with. I think I need to. I think At least I come need... and have a lunch with me. Yeah, I would love that. Yeah, they've been very good to me. And I don't fit the mold quite, but that's, like I say about fashion and everything else, you don't have to, I can't tell you how many times people tell me, like, you don't look like a Rotarian. You don't look like somebody <laughs> that goes to Africa. I'm like, well, Yes, I am. Like, you don't have to. I don't have to not wear red lipstick. I don't have to wear overalls every day. Uh And of course, I don't look like this when I go to Africa. You know, I put on a baseball cap and because Uh I don't want to draw more attention than I already do. You know, I try to be sensitive to the environment, but we can look any way we want and still do as we please. You don't have to fit in this framework anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think it's doing like the young women and men, but especially the young women, kind of a disservice to tell them, okay, you want to do that? You need to look like this and you need to talk like this. Yeah. And I think that's what's so fun about you. Like I was saying, your transparency and willingness to share, like you're on the podcast today and you were actually in one of our commercials. Yeah. (laughs) And that's our Nike number one commercial of all time that we've done. And of course, Pip is there with her, you know, in the ad. So of course that helps it become the favorite. So people have commented about seeing it. Oh my gosh. So many people. And it's, yeah, it's funny. I have actually never seen it because I, I've seen it like when you guys sent me the tape, but I, Uh you know, now it's like 
Netflix and Amazon and whatnot. I don't really watch live TV anymore. So it was kind of fun to hear like the girl that does my brows said she saw it every single morning at the gym. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> That's awesome. So tell us a little bit about how long you've been coming to La Jolla Cosmetic and what was your first treatment? What was your dipping your toe in the water? So I was referred by one of my childhood friends when I came down here from LA. I needed a new, I think I just probably came for Botox. I needed a new Botox place. And she goes, you got to come here. You got to see my girl. She's great. And this would have been probably five or six years ago. And I, I saw Lauren read and I loved her immediately. We hit it off. And it's just since then, it's a very warm, loving, like it feels like coming home to me, which is probably dangerous, but I, <laughs> but I love it. It's so comfortable and everyone's so warm and cool and kind. And it just feels like you're catching up with friends. Mm-hmm. And granted, that is not the first selling point. The first selling point is that you guys are the best at what you do. I don't care if I did not like anyone here. If you were the best, I would still come. But it is icing on the cake that I love everyone here. Oh, well, I'm the best. Oh, well, I think so. But it's always nice when you have, you know, a friend who recommends you you to come and then you experience it. You're like, wow, that really was amazing. Then you're open to sharing that with people. In when I started in this industry is now 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Very few people, even though it was San Diego and Southern California, were more open about things than other places in the United States, it still wasn't really something people talked about openly, you know, they might, you went on a little vacation and came back refreshed. Yeah. Right. Like, Oh, what have you been doing? You look so great. And you're like, Oh, I got my hair done. Right. (laughs) I got (laughs) highlights, you know, and so where (laughs) who did your hair? (laughs) So over the years, you know, it's more open, more open. And then of course, with social media, regular people are sharing their experiences. Influencers are sharing experiences and even the industry, just in terms of you know, just the marketing, all these companies, they're marketing Allergan's new campaign for Botox. I just saw the other day and it's all using real people. Skin Medica uses all real people, but they're featuring real people who are doing these things. And I saw a guy I know in the ad. I'm like, oh my gosh, I know this guy. He's a makeup artist in LA and he's, and I love that they're featuring regular people because that gives you sort of permission. If you're thinking about having something done, it's okay. Everybody's doing it, you know? Exactly. It's just people aren't lying about it anymore. (laughs) Exactly. They were doing it before. And making you feel bad. Mm -hmm. I think it, yeah, it's very cool. I think it's okay to be private about it should you choose to, but I don't agree with when you see, you know, people still look up to celebrities and celebrity means something different today than it did 20 years ago, because 20 years ago you had to be on the television or movie screen, but now you can be on somebody's cell phone and you're a celebrity. True. But people are being, and not everybody, and to each their own, but people are being a lot more forthcoming about, oh my gosh, you are so thin, or oh my gosh, you have, how are you 40, but you don't have a wrinkle. And there are still some people that are like, and no names, but like, oh, I just use olive oil on my face. <laughs> and it's like, come on, girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Either say nothing, but don't mislead because I've read stories about women that makes them feel bad about themselves. Like I am dieting and I'm using all the expensive skin creams and I don't look as good as that. And she's just using olive oil. And it's like, of course she's not. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Cause then you think, what am I doing wrong? Exactly. What's wrong with me? Mm -hmm. Well, and I think that, you know, it's just become much more accepted And there's so many more things now that are non-invasive. Nothing has to be extreme. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think people are realizing like, oh, hey, you know, I can fight back against mother nature in a way that is natural and is safe and it's not over the top. And there's so many more tools to be able to kind of keep your youth. Exactly. Without like taking that big jump and going under the knife, which Mm -hmm. I am told I have not hit that mark yet, but it's looming one day, but I'm told there is no substitute for surgery. There really isn't. You can get away with a lot of things for a long time, but there is so much more now with like laser and I've been into the threads lately and whatnot, where it's just like, people are like, do you notice a difference? I'm like, well, no, but I just haven't aged in 20 years. So, you know, like, And I think I look better too, because 
you can be photoshopped in real life. It's pretty <laughs> wild. It's like true. I'm doing the halo laser today and it's like, it gives you kind of that. What is the filter on Insta? It's like the Paris filter. It just kind of gives you that glow, but you're not filtered. This is your real skin. It's pretty incredible. And you can make your lips just a tiny bit bigger and no one knows because mm-hmm. as long as you have, of course, expert hands and eyes and those that work here that Lauren has definitely told me before, no, you can't do that. And so you need somebody that tells you no every now and then. This is so true. This is so true. If you get a yes, man, you start looking crazy. And there's a lot of places out there that will happily take your money. You know, they're not going to say no to you. Absolutely. Oh yeah. And it's kind of like with everyone, I have friends that have chosen to take the road of, you know, everything from Botox to, I have friends that have been under the knife many times to those that are just absolutely hundred percent natural. And I think, you know, whatever resonates with you, whatever makes you feel good, good for you. People are like, when should I get Botox? I'm like, never, if you don't want it, you never need Botox. But I also say, if you are going to do it and you think it's in your plan, start earlier. Mm -hmm. Very true. But if you don't want it, don't do it. Like I applaud women who age naturally. I think it's lovely. It's just like, it's not my path. Uh (laughs) (laughs) You know, and that's okay. (laughs) Both are okay. And that's really what we're getting back to is like, it's okay to be open about what you're doing and do it for yourself, not somebody else. So whatever it is that you're doing for yourself or not doing for yourself, it's giving yourself permission to like, yeah, this is what feels comfortable to me. Totally. And think about why you're doing it too. Like I kind of look at the why even, you know, before I do, it's, kind of weird. I was thinking about the other day. I was like, I've been professionally pretty for so long, you know, working like as a model and an actress and an influencer and whatnot, that that's been my job where I've been financially compensated for the way I look. It's a weird, it creates a weird relationship with your physicality almost Mm -hmm. with your appearance. And so I have to kind of check myself every now and then, because I was talking about my boyfriend the other day, I'm like, I'm going to laser this week. So I'll be kind of out of commission this week. And he's like, why you look great. I was like, well, yeah, but that, you know, I, you don't fix it when it's broken. You just keep it up. It's like car maintenance. I don't wait for my car to break down. I take it in for tune-ups. You don't wait to lose weight. You just keep going to the gym. So you're always healthy. So for me, it's always Uh been maintenance, but like, also why am I doing this? Am I doing it because it makes me feel good? Am I doing it because somebody is asking me to do it because I'm looking for some sort of validation. So kind of checking in with yourself and making sure it's for like a decent, healthy reason, whatever that is for you. Right. Now, so tell everybody, so you mentioned Botox what, mm-hmm. and you mentioned threads. What else have you over the years? Can you just like right now, just like roll down the menu of all your services <laughs> and just like check it off Okay. over the years? Fill- fillers? I've done fillers, threads. I've done the halo laser. I'm doing that again today. I did all therapy on my neck last year. That was the blessing. I will say like people talk about the COVID silver linings. I got a pig and it is a great time to get plastic surgery and lasers and all that, you guys, because you can walk around with a mask and hat. And no one knows what's going on. It's been, it's <laughs> awesome. This is so true. <laughs> yeah. You're all healing and and no one knows or puffy, exactly or whatever. None the wiser. Uh, let's see. I did Kybella before on my neck. That was one I didn't really care for because you get that like puffy neck. Yeah. <laughs> Kybella is an injectable that really kind of like blasts apart your neck fat. And so it, yeah, and what happens- you, like swell up like a bullfrog first. Yeah, exactly. Like a bullfrog. And it's kind of a weird <laughs> phenomenon. And it does work, but- the you downtime know, it, is But weird. you have to do, and especially your first one, you get more swelling than your second stage of getting treatment. Oh yeah, I just it's not it nearly as I did it a second time, mm. but it and it really did help, but it was sort of like, you know, you have to prepare for that. It's <laughs> like, a psychological thing. Like the phys- none of the physical stuff I was talking with charity before I came in here. I was like, ugh, I'm doing laser today. <laughs> and it's not like the pain doesn't bother me. It's not really nothing. It's like getting a sunburn, but it's knowing in my head that I will not be super attractive for the next week. Yeah. Like by next, I know I have a lunch on Thursday and I know I'll look good by Thursday, but I know the next Uh few days when I look in the mirror, it's not going to be cute. (laughs) However, in a week or so, I'm going to have baby skin Uh and then I'll have that baby skin until I laser again in another year or so. 
Yeah. So when was your last Halo? I did it, I want to say August of 2020. So it's been over a year. Like it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of like finding the time because you do need a solid five or six days where you can like, I'll go to the office and stuff on Monday, but I didn't want to go to any events or Mm -hmm. have my picture taken or anything. Right. And didn't you do the mirror dry? Oh, I have done the mirror dry too. Yeah. I like mirror dry. Yeah. That was another weird one. So that you'll have to explain more of the technical issues, but that was, I was interested in it because I do ironically with all the Botox and whatnot, I do try and eat pretty clean. And it's like that 80, 20 balance of 80% kale, 20% Botox, but like I try (laughs) it, you know, (laughs) I try and use clean products. So I was really trying to do all the clean deodorants because you hear how awful the chemical ones are and they cause breast cancer and all these things. But quite frankly, the clean deodorants, they work okay. But like, it kills like a lot of your sweat and odor glands in your armpits. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And the side bonus is I have no underarm hair anymore. So that was pretty cool. So some people have mirror dry because they have hyperhidrosis, which is excessive sweating in their armpits. So there's a fraction of people who have that as a actual medical Mm -hmm. condition and mirror dry solves it. But I would say the majority of our patients are doing it for lifestyle reasons where you don't want to have to put chemicals on and it's permanent. So whether you have one treatment or two treatments, you know, you're then done. And like you said, that nice side benefit is you don't have hair under there. So it's sort of like having laser hair removal at the same time. Exactly. But it's just really nice. You're, you know, you don't have to send your clothes out for cleaning as much to dry cleaners. You don't stink. Yeah, yeah. You don't like worry about like sweating on your silk dresses or whatever, but also sometimes I forget deodorant or I just, I only use like the natural hippy dippy ones now. And that is a hundred percent cuts it. Yeah. And then in terms of your skin, so your glowing skin, so you're doing Mine halo, too, yes. Yes. but what do you do when you're not in the office? When I'm not here. At night and like in the morning. Like that day when I'm not here. <laughs> I use a lot of Korean stuff. So I was in Korea, oh. let's see, I went to South Korea for Rotary Conference actually in 2016. And that really changed my opinion of skincare hmm. because I found that talking about invasive, like I do plenty of invasive things, but we were very aggressive on our skin in the Western culture. And I went over there and I found, you know, the nicest spa that gives the famous facials because I was like, I'm in South Korea. I'm going to find where all the celebrity goes. So I went and I had literally like a three hour facial. I have no idea what happened. (laughs) <laughs> at one point they're like, do you want a back massage? I'm like, okay. And they like hook up all these cups to my back and some all oh, bruised, wow. you know? So I'm just saying, okay, yeah. because like I'm polite and also, you know, but it was all about kind of pampering your skin and massaging and different masks. And so it was a different take and they use a lot more products. I think mm-hmm. Korean skincare is famous for those. Like, yeah. Like 10, 10 step steps. <laughs> yeah. So, not that I'm great about that, but I kind of dabble in that. I get some skin medica stuff here. The only non-negotiable is sunscreen. I am, I will wake up at four in the morning to catch a plane and I will put on sunscreen, even though the sun won't rise for three hours. Wow. But it shows in your skin. It, I mean, it really, it's also, I'm part Asian. So I just, I have to give credit where credit is due. Like genetics is. I think it's genetics, sunscreen, lifestyle, and you guys. <laughs> and water. Lots yeah, of water. Because exactly. she's got her water bottle, just like I always have my water bottle. Because hydration is so important. And they say by the time you feel thirsty, you're already dehydrated. So that's something that's really important in flushing your system. Absolutely. Getting yucky, yucky stuff out. So you said you see Lauren. She's your face. Yes. <laughs> yes. But I think I've seen everyone here. For something every now and then, because like Lauren's been on maternity leave a couple of times and just depending on schedule and whatnot. So I believe I've seen everyone. Oh, well, that's at good. some point, but Lauren's so then you my feel, go-to. That's your, that's your, she's your go-to and, but you're, but you feel comfortable with. Absolutely. Yeah. That's how I am. I'll like, yeah, sure. Throw that needle in your hand. I'll, I'll sit in your chair. Right. <laughs> so if we were going to narrow down of the things that you do, that you would oh, never want to pick one. Honey. No, Come I'm going to make you no three. Let's three. just say okay. three, oh, okay. th- three things you would not want to live without. <laughs> Let's see. You know what? I, I think that the neurotoxins like the Botox Dysport, 
I started Botox young. Like I would get 10 units right here in between my eyebrows. I think it was like a hundred dollars. So cute. When I think about that, I'm like, oh, you're so cute. But I just never made wrinkles. And so with Botox or Dysport, I read this analogy. It's like you fold a piece of paper, you crease it, and then you unfold it and you fold it, unfold it. So each time you're making a wrinkle and you can smooth out that paper as much as you want, but there's still going to be those itty bitty fine lines. So the key is just don't fold that paper. Ah. And so I think that would be one. I do like the fillers, not for that fake look, but it just, it's like that bone loss and it adds a little extra. Like I've always had full lips. I got teased when I was younger and now, ha ha. <laughs> we put a little in my upper lip because there's an, it, Lauren's so great. There's a mathematical proportion for the perfect symmetry of your mouth. And so my bottom lip was slightly larger than my top. So we like bump that up and you can give your cheekbones a little lift and mm-hmm. a little chin or whatever. So kind of that like I said, that real life filtering. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So the lasers are really cool because they just do give you that baby skin. I would be torn between the lasers, but also I'm digging the threads right now. Threads are the thing. Like we're one of the, I think for Nova Threads, we not only have the number one provider in the county, we also are the, the number one office. So, no way. and Yeah. It's kind of baby facelifts, but you know, it's, you can go like I've done it and gone straight into the office. Mm -hmm. I just kind of put my hair down over my, those little bandages. Exactly. (laughs) But that is pretty cool. I will say the, that procedure is a little gnarly. It feels like knitting needles going through your face. Don't be scared though. You guys, it lasts like two seconds. You don't forget it. I mean, you don't forget it. You do forget it. (laughs) It's it's not, it's a weird, it's not painful. It's an odd feeling. Yeah. Because you're numb, but that has been pretty cool because now that I am like, oh, I am 40. And so I have seen like slight, like gravity coming in. And so that's been a way to combat that because I just facelifts are not something I'm looking at. And you know, the next you're 40, five, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, people, they say like 45 to 50 people start yeah. hitting it. So I'm going to kind of wait to have a baby, see where everything kind of falls down and then <laughs> Hike hopefully not up. too far and then just <laughs> hoist it all back up, you know? Yeah. So did you have any downtime with any of the, I mean, other than the halo, because there's a little downtime in halo, you're like red and puffy a little bit, right? Halo's the only one where I like won't leave the house for a couple of days, you know, besides like walking the animals. So unless you get a bruise, which I am really militant about like, you know, stopping the fish oils and whatnot five days before, but every now and then you're just, you get a little bruise. It happens. And so that may be something that people notice. And I was like, no, it's cool. I was just chewing on a pin cap and it, (laughs) you know, burst. (laughs) That's creative. Oh yeah. My dad's like chewing on ink again, (laughs) especially nowadays when everything is, you know, digital and on computers, like how often are you using a pen? But (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I've lied my way out of stuff. Uh, But no, nothing that's been downtime in terms of like, I don't want a photo shoot and I don't want to go to a gala or something maybe, but no, not downtime in terms of leaving the house and doing my day to day besides the laser. And even that's pretty like, I'll be back in the office Monday, hopefully in the gym by like Tuesday or so. And today's Friday. Yeah. So what would you tell somebody considering an enhancement? I would say go for a consultation would be my number one because it's a relationship. I go in with Lauren, I saw her a couple months ago and I was there for Disport and I was like, I just feel a little like, eh, and a little, and then she holds up this big mirror and she's like, tell me what you see. Start at, I can't remember where you start at the top or at the bottom. We go down my face and I'll be like, this looks a little droopy. This looks a little, so it is a relationship. There's a dialogue and she will concur with some of my statements and be like, oh, you are insane with other things, you know, (laughs) Uh uh but kind of that discussion and what I think I don't know best. I mean, yeah, I'm versed in the area for maybe a consumer, but in terms of a professional, I don't, I don't know anything. So I may think I need filler where my upper lip, where she may be able to pop Botox there and give me like a little lip lift, or it may be something that it's like, no, you can't do anything about that. Or there could be something I've never heard of. And there's a game plan. There's not a cure-all. Right. It's more, it's just maintenance. 
almost like a treatment plan, you know, like, okay, let's do this one time a year. Let's do that, you know, three times a year, Absolutely. just sort of how to keep it up. And if you can get to a place, I think Khan was saying this maybe on one of the podcasts that if in a couple of years, you still don't look older, that's a huge win. You know, that people think, oh, am I going to look five years younger? Well, you might, but then if you can just maintain... If you're five years older and you don't look older... Right, yeah. That means you're five years younger, essentially, (laughs) yeah. But it's sort of like sometimes people don't see that just maintaining where they're at is a huge gain. Absolutely. Because you're not continuing to have that aging process. So if there's any things you probably wouldn't do again, is there anything that didn't really work or has everything worked or... No, I mean, I'm still here. (laughs) Like I said, I always grab the microphone here. I'm a big fan of... You guys, I am not paid to be here. I just believe in the company very strongly and the people here. No, I feel... I'll try... Like I said, I'll try anything once. (laughs) And... What's so cool, I love this industry because there are so many innovations that there is always something new. Right, right. We can have this conversation a year from now and I'll be like, oh my God, have you heard about this or this? So who knows? Yeah, that's true. The innovations are coming fast and furious and we try to, you know, we're always vetting what's the the next. Yeah, you guys are great at great about thing. not selling everything brand new. It goes through the process first. Yeah. We want to make sure it's the right thing before we jump on and buy it. But if it's a great thing, like let's add it to the toolbox because I think what's really awesome about the providers is they won't just do one thing. They might say, okay, well, let's do, you know, like you were saying, all therapy that lifts and tightens, Mm -hmm. helps stimulate collagen. So that we're going to attack this area with this tool and attack a different area with a maybe fillers for your cheeks. And so that you have multiple ways to get the right result and enough tools in the toolbox to choose from. And you guys are conscious about people's price points and whatnot. Like Lauren will and tell me, she's like, that is going to be way more expensive than doing this and you'll get the same results. I was like, oh, okay, well, great. Because yeah. you know, there is, you have to be sensitive to that, but there's so many options and you guys have the full toolkit where <laughs> We have choices, which is lovely. So what can we expect from you in 2022? Do you have any trips on the docket? Because I love seeing your Instagram profile because you're like here and there and everywhere. And I saw it just a couple days ago, Portugal. I'm like, yeah, it's in there right now. Oh my gosh. No, I got back Monday. It's kind of hard to make plans right now. You know, it's still, I do hope to get over to East Africa next year. If it's in the cards, I would like to see the hospital up and running. That would be really lovely. I do have a really lovely new boyfriend. So if that comes into fruition, it could be, you guys could be seeing less of me. Um, (laughs) So if you're listening today, we want to ask you a special favor. If you love the La Jolla Cosmetic Podcast, if you've learned something from it, or if it's helped you make a decision, or if somebody you know is curious about cosmetic procedures, tell your friends, write a review of the show on Apple Podcasts or Good Pods or wherever you're listening because we love reviews here at La Jolla Cosmetic. We're all about making sure that we continually get better and that we have five-star reviews and that we want to give you a five-star experience and that our podcast is no different. So we want to hear from you. If you want to come on the podcast, come on the podcast. I would love to have you as a guest because it wasn't too bad, was it, Camille? No, it was so fun. (laughs) Yeah, it's a fun day. And please follow Camille on Instagram and say your handle again. I am at the LA Survival Guide. So you can put the the there. Oh, yes. Because there's another, there's a LA Survival Guide. I'm like, that's not me. You got to look for the dog and the pig. That's how you know. the LA Survival Guide. And you have a blog, which is really great. I do. It's a much neglected blog, unfortunately, but it's there. It's in there. It's floating on the internet. It may pop up again one day. Who knows? And then follow us at LJCSC. And if you're listening today and you have questions or need information about scheduling or financing or reviews or before and after photos, check our show notes for links. They'll all be there. Thank you, Camille. 
Yeah. Thank you for having me. I'm so flattered. I was asked. I was like, I don't know that I have anything to share, but you know, every time I get a mic in my face, I'm <laughs> I'm excited. So yeah. Well, this was really fun. And I, I've gotten to know you over the years and I love our shared affection for USC. And I remember you brought me a gift one time and it was something USC related. And I was like, oh, she's so sweet. <laughs> Did I think I bought you like was flowers it, that were USC colored or something. Flowers. Yes. I remember in the room where you're sitting right now, that was my office and you brought them. Yeah. You, they were they, orchids. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, this girl has not only thought to bring me flowers, but she's brought me flowers in the colors that she knows I care about. <laughs> So it's so sweet of you. So thank you again. And thanks everybody for listening. And we'll see you on the next episode. Take a screenshot of this podcast episode with your phone and show it at your consultation or appointment or mention the promo code podcast to receive $25 off any service or product of $50 or more at La Jolla Cosmetics. La Jolla Cosmetic is located just off the I-5 San Diego Freeway in the Zymed Building on the Scripps Memorial Hospital campus. To learn more, go to ljcsc.com or follow the team on Instagram at ljcsc. The La Jolla Cosmetic Podcast is a production of The Axis, T-H-E-A-X-I-S dot I-O.